And uh, so let's move on to the topic of sales. And uh, when we think of sales, it's, it's a great summary to really think about why customers buy. So, so uh, here it starts to get into the, into different level than just purely logic and purely uh, systematic things. Um, or at least there needs to be these considerations into to other aspects as well. So this comes very much about emotion and having empathy and understanding of the customers uh, to be able to sell good and sell well. So people really buy with emotion and then they justify with logic. So people don't primarily buy with logic and justify with emotion. So this goes into um, into building that emotion, whether it's that they are missing out or they need the product, or it's it's a it's an emotion that feels that oh this will solve my problem, this will take my pain away, or this will entertain me, whatever whatever that may be, that's the emotion, and then they rationalize, okay, I buy this because of, and then that's the logic part. And they don't buy into, to, uh, into something, but they buy to get out of something. So again, if you can get people out of the problem, boredom, um, uh, being late, being delayed, taking too much time. Uh, so people are basically lazy by design. And if you can, like, it's separate when they proactively are motivated or inspired or so forth about something, but if you take everything away and you just take an average, if you can make things easier, so basically letting people be more lazy, getting more with less, whether that's faster, cheaper, you name it, uh, then that's you removing something away and removing friction, and uh, and uh, and that's 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 a, a key factor. And. The amount of success in sales in the markets is depending on how well you understand the market pains. So what are those pains in the markets? And if you think of Amazon, for example, they, they really are in business of removing friction. So they are really taking this into their core. And that's why the majority of their business is about logistics. So it's about making this premium uh, Amazon Prime and just getting everything very easy, making um, making Alexa the, the the voice thing is the whole port port of like removing the whole physical interface, going to the computers and whatnot, and just on one hand being able to ask things and have those delivered to you, you know, same day, next day, or even going further, you can Im imagine them like the. Amazon is listening in and saying, hey, it sounds like you are out of, uh, you know, whatever that be, washing, washing powder or you are out of toilet paper, like, would you like us to deliver it to you? You name it, it's about removing friction. And people don't buy products or services, they buy stories. So whenever there's a good story, when, when there is meaning behind, and when they can understand how the offering came to came about, and through that they can relate to that story, uh, that is more appealing. So you you see even in the very um, if you think about like the the let's see, say a painting in the store, or you see a, some handcrafted product in the store, and you only see the product, you see it's a cup has some design, doesn't really, isn't that appealing. But if you hear the story behind that, how it, it came about that this cup is here, what is the story of the tab, the artist that created the design, what is the process of where it's created, uh, what else is contributed to, like some 10% it going to somewhere, uh, good, good, good use, or it's a fair trade product versus not a fair trade product, 
uh, these all give meanings for users uh, or customers uh, to give more reasons to buy the product or service versus some other does have no meaning whatsoever, doesn't have a story behind. So facts tell, but stories sell. So it also contributes to the first point about, uh, about the emotional side of things. So when you think of your, your product or service marketing and sales communication with customers, these are the three key principles that you have to get into a different level than just facts about your features and facts about your products and facts about uh, the prices and facts about the delivery and facts about the support. You need to think of through, through these lenses and you will be able to communicate at very different level and res re resonate with customers in a much deeper level. And now you can, with this kind of mindset, you can then start to look at some of your favorite companies' uh, communication, uh, how they communicate about their products and services. So it's at, at the very basic level, it's moving from features to benefits. So before you start selling with facts, list all of your features and facts and specs and then translate them into benefits. So use the, the previous points of thinking and really translate them into messages that uh, resonate more with the customers. And knowing, having your customer profile or customer persona, a persona as a tool, what type of customers they are, uh, what type of behavior, what type of life do they live uh, to try to attach the product and service benefits more into their life using the, the, the kind of the three key elements uh, from the previous slide. So a feature is a fact about your product while a benefit is an explanation, touching emotions and true storytelling of what that feature does for your customer. So think about it in, in that way. And it doesn't have to be, it's not meaning that you have to have a storybook. It's just that over different touch points in different like segments where you tell about the product, you can embed pieces of that story. Uh, and and you, can, you can really look at this, a lot of samples out, out from this topic as well to really Google and, and look at some of the best practices. A benefit can be a phrase that's positive, so basically meaning that it proves productivity, it brings you some additional value, or as a problem that is avoided, so removing problems, pains, and these are of course uh, part of the original value proposition canvas uh, that is part of the, uh, the business model canvas tool that we, we covered on the previous module. But this also is how does it come to the sales communications and brochures and materials is finding the right language to communicate and having empathy with the customer in this context. So then when it comes to sales as the growth and scaling and, and looking at the numbers, you really need to know the basic things. You need to know how many leads it takes to close a deal what your close rate is, closing rate is, how much a typical deal brings in money, revenue, growth, uh, lifetime value, whatever that is, how, you, how it's measured, and what is the average lead time from the first contact to close deal. And this is also one aspect of what is the lead time from the first contact to close deal is how you can measure the development of the market. So how is the is it where the marketing market is developing? This should be accelerating both on your own effort, but also because of the market is maturing for your innovation. And it, in a combination is also your position and reputation in the market. So the lead time from first contact to close deal communicates about your the, the trust that the customers are having to your company and your product, the, the, how the market is developing and how your effort uh, to try to improve that is, is actually working. So 
So that's a, a key measure. This is a very kind of couple of key KPIs in this, but these are the, the, the core numbers you should know. Overall, the sales is very much a numbers game. So you have opportunities to increase uh, to to increase more leads. So get more leads equals to more sales. When you improve the sales funnel and the process and and the, the uh, lead time from a, a lead to a customer and a happy customer, <clears throat> the more sales you have. The more you can replicate good customer profiles to improve. Uh, customer targeting, the more sales you will have. The, the more customer segments you can identify, either, either divide your current customer segment to two, two different segments uh, or finding additional segment that is uh, uh, parallel to the current segment, the more sales you will start to find. The new channels you can find, again, it comes easier to find new channels when you identify the segments more accurately or you find additional segments. The new channels you can find and the more sales you will get. The more you can sell to existing customers, the more sales you will get. So the more of associated needs they have for the products and services you are already delivering. So additional product, additional features, or additional services from your partners or whatnot. But the more additional things you can cater for them, the more value you can create for them and the more sales you will make. But of course, it's also like with everything else, it's about balancing these things strategically, having a plan, executing on the plan, looking at the results, uh, changing the plan, um, evaluating, executing on them, evaluating the results and so forth. So bringing focus to sales is like with, just like with MVP for your product, you should have this minimum viable thinking in everything, including the sales processes. So whenever you are making some changes, find the easiest and quickest way to test that. So you may have in your sales team more of those creative types who can be more creative in coming up with different things and uh, have no problem of you know testing things and feeling confident about whatever they're talking and saying that you want to do the minimum viable testing uh, to start learning and improving but then once you find something and it's resonating and working then document it making it, it the, in a model that can be done in a scalable way but try to make it uh, uh, in, I mean I think we all know about the, like magazine sales, outbound calls, and these types of that are overly scripted, uh, but they still work. Uh, so, so it's a talent to find uh, so that there's a clear model, there's a clear process, there's a clear script and templates, but delivering that in a natural way. So when, when there is a model that works, max out on that, make sure that it's run as much as, an, as wide and as effectively as possible to as, uh, as much as you can find that customer segment and channels to, to run that through with. As, as, a, as a lighter point, you should have the whole world track on track to be covered before you start to uh, introduce significant new products and new offering or, or whatnot. So once that's on, the, on its own track to be developed and improved and executed and more resources put in behind to execute on that and you can start seeing results of that, then you can start working on the next one. But if you have too many of these happening at the same time, um, then you will lose the ability to make necessary changes, to, to have enough uh, ability to learn from them uh, and so forth. So you are expanding too wide, too fast to be able to benefit from those. So have a, again, this is part of the strategic review to look at, okay, what are all of the different things that we are trying, what we are the different tests, what are the results? Like if you can fit those into the uh, time of a strategic session, then you are doing too much of them. 
because you are not learning fast enough as an organization and you are running too much on that uh, just being creative with people and not enough making them scalable. So basic sales tracking. Um, so looking at this tracking from per channel, per segment, per person and so forth. So number of new leads contact last week, number of new proposals sent last week, number of closed deals last week, total number of open proposals waiting for decisions, average lead to proposal rate, so this is uh, not to the, to the whole funnel or the whole lead time, sub-segment, success rate, how many of, of these uh, uh, proposals we have out, how many of those we are winning, and uh, average sales funnel lead time. So this is of course more if, if this would be like B2B, scaling B2B business or a more expensive product, but you can convert this same thinking even into a smaller, more automated uh, funnels for the same, same type of logic of what type of uh, basic tracking should be looked at. <clears throat> So then to evaluate the progress, uh, the, some of the key discussion points per, again, per channel, segment. So this is the strategy work uh, that should be uh, periodical. And it, what is the right period for what type of activity depends on at what level of scale you are, how much you are focusing on that activity at the moment. But uh, it's really the key sales learnings, <coughs> listing points to mention. Uh, to others and leveraging those and then testing testing uh, uh, to apply those uh, to uh, other group of people first and then uh, further along to, to uh, adding more people uh, where those, those are working. And ideas and methods approaches to test for more sales. So again, you need to have some systematic model what ideas are to be tested, what are not to be tested, and you need to have some kind of a, a prioritization method in place that is, a, is a logical and understandable for others, so that when they have these ideas and they suggest these ideas, we should do this, that they can also communicate it in the way where they're trying to cater for, 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 for that need. So easiest to implement with highest potential should get the highest priority. So some kind of ranking so this is the generic prioritization that we were looking at uh, um, when doing validation, when doing new product features. So the same should be used as a, uh, as a generic tool that everyone understands. Okay, if, I, if I'm having a suggestion, I need to consider like how quickly or easily this can be tested versus what would be the potential in, uh, outcome of that. Uh, but uh, and then at the same time, of course, when it's evaluated, then it should be looked uh, looked at from that perspective, and the, the learning should be shared, and documented and, and shared. And then when we compare sales versus marketing, these are clearly two but uh, connected functions. Uh, and, and uh, really a good def definition for what marketing is, it is multiplying sales message. So it's basically finding a scalable way to deliver what has been learned when doing sales. So what we have learned from customers, whether that's customer development, uh, market development, uh, user interface development, user experience development, uh, all of those are places where we embed sales messages, whether it's communicating the benefits, the emotions, whatnot. But how these are acquired is typically through a outbound or in connection with, uh, with sales and then automating that. So multiplying that and then when we learn more, then we should update that and it should work. Uh, even better. So sale, while sales is sales of course in its own right and it has a function but it has also this additional dimension that is very important and that's also why it's very valuable 
that also the key management and the founders, they also do sales uh, themselves to really understand and learn and having first-hand experience on what's working, what's not working, and even part of testing those things. But they should not be doing it just in a silo or separately uh, and not communicating back the same way as so everyone else is communicating back. So really to understand and learn what sales messages work and why do those work. And this is the internal rationale that they should always be able to ra rationalize these things because um, sometimes people have strong opinions and views for, for that they don't believe even that something works even if it does work and they don't execute if it's not clearly communicating communicated or rationalized why, why does it work. Uh, marketing should also be measured for learning and improving, but harder to understand why something works or not. So that's why through there should be a clear uh, exchange of information and KPIs, comparison between the sales activities and marketing activities. But of course, the marketing and the digital and automation is, is the part that helps really scale the sales and is, is specifically communicating the, the, the sales messages. So again, the key is finding the right balance of volume, learning and understanding and, and systematically optimize uh, between these. So, then when we look at uh, the different channels for where to, to, to get the, the sales messages out, we have a, a bunch of different considerations that we can look at. We can consider creating a viral marketing campaign where we embed the sales messages in something where, where people want to share that uh, forward. And there are some really great examples, of course, about viral marketing campaigns you can go to Google and, and, and or YouTube and search for first search for this, and you, you get the sense that the the story and the emotions are embedded into the viral, uh, whether it's a joke, whether it's some other concept itself, and then there's the branding to follow or some other call to action to follow. Sometimes, of course, these are accidental, and some agencies even try to just find. Uh, accidentally viral YouTube videos or other videos that has gone viral and then they try to imitate that in, and convert that into a product or marketing message and redo the whole setup and, and do a whole production out of that and then try to repeat, repeat that uh, virality through that way. Of course it may or may not work but these are just some of the strategies. You have the traditional PR where you build relationships uh, with, uh, with the media, uh, either as, a, as an expert of a, of a subject matter, uh, or you build your own profile, um, or, you, or you have a clear kind of ongoing communication plan and strategy working with, with the key media in your in the industry. Then there's some conventional PR, of course, I would say, uh, Maybe the, uh, some of some of the, the entrepreneurial founders, uh, specifically like Richard Branson, has been very uh, effectively using this unconventional PR, doing his own kind of crazy announcements and and uh, even some extreme activities uh, and, and and things with his younger age to to get PR for his business and. Cover, covering uh, and just getting visibility. Uh, then there's search engine uh, marketing, search engine optimization. So this is of course the keywords and Google's and the other search engines like even in YouTube's and so forth on how to optimize uh, for visibility. Then there's the social media advertising display advertising and, and the display advertising is specifically in the context of uh, some of the some of the new um, uh, 
new medias, for example, in smart TVs and, and, and uh, in context of some, some other new uh, display formats. Inside games, for example, and, and whatnot. <clears throat> Offline ads, they are still uh, very much used and very powerful also and you can you can also do those in a very condensed area so you can see uh, of course with different price points but you can see for example in in san francisco and silicon valley some of the startups uh even even making fun funny funny things and getting attention that way uh with with the uh, offline ads uh, content marketing so that's uh, in the best format of content marketing is delivering value on the on the expertise uh, subject that you you know well and then connecting the tools that are being provided for that to 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 uh, kind of capturing that that value or utilizing that value email marketing uh, very powerful it has been there for ages and ages and it's still uh, very powerful means of communication. Uh, email for sure is not disappearing, even if different people every time now and then claim that it's it's done, but it's still very much out there. Um, social media platforms, and of course here is much different activities where you can share, uh, systematically share value and communication about uh, the industry that you are involved. Um, and, and so forth. In engineering as a marketing, so that's uh, basically embedding, uh, again, embedding the, the sales messages into product itself, in the user interface, into user experience, in the journey of using specific uh, features. They could become aware of additional features, upgrading the product to, to next level and so forth. Uh, traditional medi media, so these are books, magazines, in, in print and digital format, tablet format, um, even like TV, of course, would be very powerful. And uh, these are typically also uh, places that can, in addition that they, they have this kind of broadcast uh, format, then they also still add a lot of credibility uh, for the business and product. Of course, it depends on the context, but uh, very, very uh, powerful channels. Uh, own market research, so, so that can be a strategy to build a customer base by building a research uh, project to find out more about the customers, but doing that as a, as a more open research that is going to be published or at least shared the findings amongst those who take part of the research but uh, doing that in a quality way can be a very powerful uh, channel to also communicate additional uh, sales messages. Then taking partner channels and all of the types of things partners have, their newsletters, their websites, um, their blogs, uh, YouTube channels, uh, you name it. Um, seeing what kind of collaboration messages can be uh, push through um, target market blocks, so getting more into uh, business vertical specific or industry specific, whether that's about AI as, as what you are developing, regardless of who are the end customers and tapping into the AI uh, market segment channels and uh, communication, or whether that's then where the AI is applied for like, uh, elderly care and the whole elderly care industry and uh, that tar target market uh, business vertical communications and publications and so forth. Um, attaching to uh, other companies or individuals or organizations, Facebook groups and other forums and or establishing your own groups and forums over time and share or, or building this kind of uh, creating this together with your partners even and so forth. Uh, business development, so that's your own internal channel that you are in where you are in constant uh, 
<coughs> discussion with, with your existing customer base and then on the outbound sales where you are constantly reaching new contacts and what type of uh, uh, communication you can embed there uh, about other products or features or opportunities beyond what's already been uh, presented and, and you can test also there. Uh, recommendation programs, so these are like affiliate program or any other methods where uh, basically you can incentivize and build build some models where other people proactively want to promote your product and, and service. So for example, uh, promote to your customers, invite your friends and you get some additional benefits of the product you are using and, and that's a recommendation types program. Other existing platforms, app stores, industry portals, uh, and so forth. Uh, of course, events and trade shows, and specifically those that are where your customers are, and not so much, for example, where, where, uh, where they are just um, about companies and startups. So really, those, those, the more you get into scaling phase, the more you should be leverage and spending time more on where your customers are instead of where other entrepreneurs and other startups are. Um, you can create webinar formats for different topics and uh, really really expand that and make that a, a, a value distribution method and in, inside that uh, you are communicating about your company brand or other, other offerings along the way. And then um, the similar as with um, traditional media, you can be a, become an expert on a certain topic or if you are an expert on a certain topic, you can share a lot of additional knowledge uh, beyond your own products and sales. The same you can get in a speaking engagement of, of talking about uh, certain expertise relevant to your business and product for, for industry visibility and so forth. And then overall, it's about also building community uh, out of your customers and with your customers to, to kind of really build from the loyal, loyal uh, follower groups to, to tap into their support and even them help and their ideas to expand your business and, and, and utilizing the channels they have, whether they are Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn uh, feeds and so forth. So when looking at this market communication uh, a bit more broader and connecting these different things, um, the sales messages and the company communication and so forth, there's much more than just sales and marketing. There's brand communication, there's um, many different aspects. So I created this kind of a, framework to help categorize and really um, separate and build a more understandable structure also for those who receive your communication whether it's internal or external or partners uh, to understand what are those messages telling now so if you mix vision messages with uh, current product offering messages you can understand that there can be conflict of understanding of of, so what, what are they now saying that they have these features or they don't have these features? Or if you are uh, mixing um, conceptual outlines of future foundation that you are looking to build future products uh, and there is no connection with uh, past learnings of the previous offering, uh, then, then you are missing an opportunity to, to convince about why you are making these considerations and this can be for bigger customers, for investors, for, for clients. So really uh, have a clearer separation between all of these considerations and, and uh, for example in single blog post don't necessarily uh, just talk about all of these different aspects in all in one blog post without clearly kind of separating um, uh, that into talking only at one 
or maximum three different uh, topics at once and not without having any any context in between. So uh, always uh, underestimate um, the, the how much people are willing to spend time trying to understand what you're trying to say. Make things obvious, re rather repeat than uh, assume that there is information, uh, any context before. So always consider every message that it should have uh, structurally so that people, people who you are communicating that understands what is this about and how does it relate to other parts that are 